Hi everybody, uh, I just got out of seeing uh, Baby Driver, which is one of the bigger movies of the summer that everyone's looking forward to, getting tons of positive reviews from critics, a lot of hype, a lot of excitement, and since I saw it on Tuesday night, one of the first non-professional critics to have seen it, uh, so I thought I'd give you guys my thoughts before we do a full review on Movie Dudes. So in Baby Driver, Ansel Elgort, he plays a getaway driver who falls in love with a waitress and he wants to get out of his life of crime, but he owes a debt to his boss, played by Kevin Spacey. And so it's kind of him continuing to do one last job to pay off his debt and try to find a way out of this life of crime. Uh, I think I should say right off the bat, and I'm going to lose a ton of credibility by saying this, I have never loved a movie by Edgar Wright. Uh, he's the writer-director of this. He did um, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, The World's End, some other stuff as well. Everyone loves these movies, and I have never... I've enjoyed them to different degrees, but I've never really loved them. And I think the thing is, is... The big trademark of those movies, especially like Shaun of the Dead, is it's it's a parody of a genre. It's poking fun at zombie movies while also kind of being an effective zombie movie in and of itself. And I think sometimes that works. Um, like, for instance, just recently I watched Lego, the Lego Batman movie, and that pokes fun at all the, the Batman movies, but it also kind of works as a Batman movie, and it... it really works as a deconstruction of uh, the character but when it comes to the Edgar Wright movies I've always just been kind of like how about instead of making fun of zombie movies or making fun of cop movies how about just do the thing make a zombie movie and I don't need the winking and the nodding and being like get it you get it like we're poking fun at this remember this from this like and so, it was a good surprise for me to, to for Baby Driver, is a genre movie, you know, it's a chase heist type movie that is, it's playing it kind of straight. It's, um, it's not, it's not a parody. Um, and for the most part, I, you know, I'll say right off the bat, I think the movie is a lot of fun. I think it's very entertaining. I think it's a crowd pleaser. It's an easy recommend. So if you have any interest in going to see it, go see it. Um, I've seen some reviews going into it, um, comparing, like making some pretty strong comparisons. For one, I heard some people, I want to say it was on What the Flick, they compared it to True Romance, which I think is a, pretty much a masterpiece. Um... It's not as good as True Romance, at least in my opinion. It might do some things better than True Romance, but um, no. And I, I want to say, on that same review, they said it's the movie... And now this could be... This might be a different review, but anyways, someone said... It's the movie that you thought you were going to see um, based on the trailers for Drive. And, you know, a lot of people... Well, some people were upset with Drive because it was kind of more of an art house film. I happen to love Drive. I know a lot of you know film nerds love Drive, but that that like comparison saying it's the it's the movie you expected out of Drive from the trailers is is not wrong. This kind of delivers the goods that you expect. There's uh, I think a minimum of three heists in it. Um, never really slows down. And it's kind of like that same premise. We're talking about a getaway driver here who's very good at his job, um, but has, you know, different goals, like a love interest. So uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. But th there are some things that, you know, there's a tendency to, like, just... You know, for critics to like gather around a movie and hype it up to the point of where it could almost ruin it for you, where you're so much good things going in um, that kind of ruins it. That did not happen with uh, Baby Driver, but 
I mean, I don't think it's a perfect movie. It's not without its flaws. Um, and so I'm going to give you my little nitpicks before I eventually tell you again you should go see it. But uh, probably my biggest nitpick, and this is based on other critics' reviews, is a lot of critics made such a big deal about the soundtrack and its use of music. And I totally can see why they would mention that. But, like... Because they built that up so much for me, I wish I had loved the soundtrack more. Like, the way it uses music in the movie is pretty good. It's, it's almost nonstop. There's almost always a new song in it. You know, you maybe go a minute or two without music. Because Baby has tinnitus in his ear from an accident he got into when he's younger. So he's always listening to music on his iPod to drown out the sound and so he can focus on his job. So he's just constantly shuffling through new songs on his iPod. I just didn't love any of the songs in it. Even like a lot of the songs, some some of the songs I'll be honest I didn't know. A lot of songs are like, like the songs that you hear on a classic rock station that you're like, they're not the hits. They're like the B, like not the B sides, but like, like a lot of times there was a song I'm like, yeah I know that song, but I can't tell you the name of it or who the artist is. And maybe that's my own deficiency. I know there are people who probably just love and adore the soundtrack. But, like, for me, it was always just, like, you couldn't find a better Queen song? Like, I don't know. So, for me, it wasn't like the soundtrack was a miss. But, like, it got built up to the point that when I was watching the movie, I, I really did not... I was not blown away by the soundtrack. Um... And, like, some of the best soundtrack bits, like the Tequila song, were spoiled in the trailer. Another, you know, slight nitpick is... I thought some of the side characters in this movie come off as cartoonish. Uh, I really enjoyed Jamie Foxx in this. He's very funny. Um, John Hamm, I think, also did a good job. But both of those characters, and those are two that I have in mind when I say side characters... They come off as a little ridiculous. Um, especially John Hamm late in the movie. I don't want to spoil anything. I know most people haven't seen it yet. But I think his character, his reaction to events and the way he handles things, it feels like out of a, a, a more ridiculous, more cartoonish movie. I... Didn't hate it. And there's a lot of fun near the end. Uh, one of the great parts about the end of this movie is like the last half hour is pretty much all action, which is awesome. But get off the table. Sorry, I have to discipline my cat. But yeah, it's just, I just didn't buy his character going through the links that he goes through near the end to accomplish what he's trying to accomplish. Um, the female characters in the movie are given absolutely nothing to fucking do. There's only two of them to begin with, but, like, the love interest, she doesn't really do much in it. And I, I cannot... And I'm sorry I didn't look up their names, but, like, there's a, also a girl that is in on the team that does heist with them. She doesn't really do much. Uh, they're not really... You know, they're not really characters. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh... Then again, it's not like... Uh, Jamie Foxx or John Hamm are super deep characters either. But they're given a whole lot more to do. And we do know a little bit more about them. It's just something, you know... They could have used some writing as well. Um... The only other thing I have a problem with is I thought the ending, like I said, the last half hour is a lot of fun, a lot of crazy stuff happening, but I would have loved if the last two minutes or so were completely different. I don't want to spoil it so much. Um, there's a way I could try to explain it without spoiling it. It's doing, you know, it's, the movie's very kinetic, very... A lot of movement. Never slows down. And at the end, it kind of like... Goes for a very traditional... Kind of ending that feels kind of lame, I think. And it's not... It's just like the tail... 
two minutes of the movie. Um, I think of like a really solid ending. I think of The Dark Knight, where the action's happening, at, you know, at the very end, and he's being chased, and he's going up a ramp, and it cuts to black right in the middle of the action. And you, there was an opportunity in Baby Driver to do the same exact thing, but instead it goes for a very traditional uh, denouement, like you know, years later, and this is what's happening, and and here's like this very very traditional safe almost ending um, when you could just kept with the action that was happening five minutes before that and have them driving off with all the cops chasing them. Cut the black, you know. I mean, that would have been, I think, a much more powerful ending. But that's me playing, uh, you know, Monday morning quarterback or director or whatever. Um, you know, all these little nitpicks said, the movie is, it, it's a whole lot of fun. And it, it, it moves along so much. Even though it's almost two hours, it moves along at a pace. That, like, it never really slows down enough for you to... to to notice uh, any of these like flaws like uh, if you're like me and you want to sit there and examine it yeah afterwards I, know, I sat there and thought about it and I'm like these are things I didn't totally love about it and I would say I, I like you know the comparisons I mentioned earlier True Romance and Drive I actually like more but I think most audiences will like this movie more than Drive it's definitely more of a crowd pleaser. It's definitely more conventional cinema. Like, you know, just... It, it is what it is. It is this heist movie about a guy that wants to get out of the life. Um, and it's effective, and it's fun, and it's funny. And, you know, it has some good action, and it has, you know, a little bit of violence here and there. There's an appalling scene that I saw coming from a mile away. Now that I said that, you will too. But I guess I won't say anything more or spoil it any more than that. Um, I liked it quite a bit. There's just, you know, I think the soundtrack's a little overhyped. I think the side characters are a little cartoonish. Uh, I think the ending could have just been better if it was still just all balls out like the rest of it. Instead of this, like... Oh, now we have to resolve the thing with the character that we've been setting up. I don't know. That said, it, like it's it's definitely one of the best movies of the year. It would probably be my top five of the year so far. Um, and I'm gonna give it a very solid rating of four out of five stars. You should definitely go see this one. But like I said, I just had little things I didn't totally love, but. Um, I'll leave it at that and not get into spoilers. Uh, subscribe to Movie Dudes for full review with my co-host Chris. Chris? Chris. And we probably will get into spoilers uh, when we get to that episode. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. and see you next time.